Why hello there, and welcome back to another exciting Let's Make Us a Character. And this time we are moving away from the heroic fantasy adventure of Dungeons and Dragons and into the maddening cosmic horror of Call of Cthulhu. Sixth edition specifically, because that just happens to be the one on my bookshelf. So without any further ado, let's make us a Call of Cthulhu character. We begin by rolling 3d6 for our Strength, Constitution, Dexterity, Appearance, and Power. Then 2d6 plus 6 for our Size and Intelligence. And 3d6 plus 3 for our Education. And finally 1d10 for our Wealth level which we then look up on the yearly income and property table, and since this is a 1920s character, our roll of 10 means that we have a yearly income of $20,000. We have total assets equal to 5 times our yearly income, 10% in cash, 10% in stocks and bonds, and the rest in property, cars, rare books, etc. Characters have a minimum age equal to 6 plus their education, so 13, and for every 10 years we add to that, we gain one point of education, so let's make our character 33 years old, which bumps our education up to 9, because it is possibly the most important stat in the game. Our sanity is equal to our power times 5, which sets our starting sanity points. We also start with magic points equal to our power, and hit points equal to the average of our constitution and size. We then add our strength and size, and look up the total on a table to get our damage bonus, which is zero. We also have a 99 minus Cthulhu Mythos stat, which starts at 99, and I will explain later. Now we determine our idea, luck, and no rolls, which are equal to five times our intelligence, power, and education scores, respectively. Next, we need to choose our occupation, which means we need to figure out what kind of character this is. And looking at our stats, a few things do jump out, most notably our very high income, but also the education level of a high school sophomore. A thing that we need to figure out a way to rationalize. We could say that our character is some kind of self-taught genius, or perhaps a criminal kingpin, but they don't really have the sort of attributes you would need to justify one of those two, so let's just say that they're a wealthy heir. And perhaps their very bad scores in strength, dexterity, and appearance are the result of being mangled in a horrible drunken car crash, which then led to an obsession with death and the occult. See? character backstories are easy. And to represent that, we will select the provided dilettante occupation. Occupations provide eight skills, usually including one or two of the player's choice, and we get two of those here, so let's pick own language and drive auto. We get a number of skill points to spend on our occupation skills, equal to our education times 20, so 180. See, I said education was important. Each skill has a base percentage, with dodge and own language notably having a base equal to dexterity times 2 and education times 5 respectively, to which we then add our skill points. And since our character's biggest asset is their wealth, let's put 65 points in credit rating, 20 in own language because presumably they like to sound sophisticated, 30 in drive auto because we gotta drive all of our expensive cars, 30 in shotgun, because, you know, maybe we like skeet shooting, not just because weapon skills tend to come in handy. And then let's just dump everything else into playing the theremin. We then get personal interest points equal to 10 times our intelligence, so 130, which we can spend on any skill other than Cthulhu Mythos, which, once again, I will explain later. So let's put 40 in Occult, because that seems like something a wealthy dilettante might dabble in, 35 each in Bargaining and Persuade, and our last 20 in Library Use, because it is one of the most important skills in this game. We also have some basic attack skills, which we could have put our points into, but we didn't, and space to note whatever weapons we may have. So let's just give ourselves a shotgun, note all the relevant attributes for it, and this character is done. 
And uh, now I'm actually going to explain the basic mechanics here because they're very easy and relevant to character advancement. So let's say our character wants to identify an occult symbol. Our occult skill is 50%, meaning that we have a 50% chance to succeed. So we roll some percentile dice, and if the result is lower than our listed percentage, we succeed. And if that skill use was somehow meaningful, we also check the box next to that skill. Now, let's say that we have completed a scenario and checked several of our skills. We are given the option to increase the checked skills by rolling against them with every failed check, allowing us to add 1d10 points to that skill. So the lower a skill is, the easier it is to improve. And of course that applies to all skills except Cthulhu Mythos, which yes, I am finally getting to. The Cthulhu Mythos skill can only be raised by encountering or directly studying the Cthulhu Mythos. So let's say our character has purchased a copy of The King in Yellow from a rare book auction. Upon seeing the yellow sign, we must make a sanity roll, which is tested against our current sanity points which we fail and lose two sanity points. But that just compels us further to investigate this strange tome. And after a week or so of studying the book, we suffer an additional sanity point loss from the horrible truths that we have uncovered, and increase our Cthulhu Mythos skill by five, which then lowers our 99 minus Cthulhu Mythos score to 94, which is now our maximum sanity. Sanity can in fact be raised above the starting value, but never above the Cthulhu-induced maximum. So, the more you learn about the Cthulhu Mythos, the less sane you can be. And that is it, a Call of Cthulhu character. It is a very number-heavy system, but one that I actually really like. I like the simplicity of having your skill rating be your probability of success, and also increasing skills by using them successfully. I will say that the combat is kind of... bad, but that's not really a major part of the game. It is mostly investigation and such, so you do primarily use your various skills to achieve your goals rather than punching and shooting. Alright, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and check out the other videos. There are other videos. They are all okay. And until next time, keep on rolling.